Cedar Point probably just made the biggest surprise announcement for a new attraction opening up in 2025. And that's of course Siren's Curse, which is a huge deal for many reasons. This is a roller coaster manufactured by Vacoma, a Dutch company who's been in a renaissance of producing a new generation of roller coaster. Here in the United States, we've gotten a little dabble of that, but Europe and Asia have been getting all of these brand new Vacoma thrill rides, and this will be one of the first to open in the United States. And not only that, but the ride is also a tilt coaster which technically isn't a brand new concept, as Vacoma actually built one in 2002 called Gravity Max at Discovery World in Taiwan. And Gravity Max is actually the only Vacoma tilt coaster that is open to the public. Before the announcement of Siren's Curse, there were two other Vacoma tilt coasters that were in production. The largest tilt coaster is already constructed at Six Flags Cadilla, and should open with the park when it's ready for its grand unveil. And I believe the other one is yet to be constructed, and that is Circuit Breaker at Coda Land in Austin, Texas. Texas. And now we have the most recent surprise, Siren's Curse, which could be the first tilt coaster to open in North America. Now this ride looks awesome and I am super excited for it. But before I get into why that is, I do have to say that this roller coaster is oddly not Cedar Point like. The first reason being that the ride is actually not scheduled to open until the summer of 2025, which very much goes against the way that Cedar Point and the former Cedar Fair as a whole would open up their brand new attractions as pretty much all brand new Cedar Fair rides open up with the park at the start of the season. And that's mainly because the former Cedar Fair would plan their new addition so well that the construction of a new attraction would take place early enough for that ride to be ready to go on the park's opening day the following season. So with Cedar Point's last two new roller coasters, those of course being Steel Vengeance in 2018 and Top Thrill 2 in 2024, construction on those rides started early, with work on Steel Vengeance starting as early in the fall of 2016, and Top Thrill 2 was a bit of a different case, but that ride was already testing by December of 2023. So if Siren's Curse were following the norm, this ride would already be well under construction, but it's not at all, which is very unlike the way that Cedar Point or the former Cedar Fair would add attractions. It's actually just in line with how the former Six Flags company would add their new attractions, with their rides opening much later in a park season, so construction work would occur much later than it would at Cedar Fair parks. And I'm not here to knock park management on why this edition is opening late, but I think it's pretty clear the reason why it is, and that's because this was a last second addition to Cedar Point. The general speculation at the moment is that this coaster was actually meant to open at Energylandia in Poland, and if that's the case, Energylandia actually worked with Vacoma to redevelop the tilt coaster concept. But on October 24th, 2023, Energylandia submitted a notice of termination on the contract to build that tilt coaster, and apparently Six Flags bought what was supposed to be Energylandia's tilt coaster and shipped it to Six Flags Mexico, where track pieces were spotted in the parking lot. Then during the summer of 2024, Six Flags Mexico started teasing that they would be opening a new attraction, giving as much detail as that it would be a new roller coaster for the park's 25th anniversary. But as word spread about the new roller coaster coming to Six Flags Mexico, local neighbors around the park were not happy about it, as in order to add the coaster, a large amount of trees would have had to been removed. These complaints were heard by the local government, who even went as far as posting on Twitter that Six Flags did not have the authorization to construct what was codenamed Roller Coaster Type A. Pretty much, the local government wished for Six Flags to move the new roller coaster to a different location in the park that didn't require so many trees to be removed. And Six Flags Mexico even responded the following day, saying that they had found a new location for the coaster that wouldn't require a single tree to be removed. But as the story goes, something didn't fall through and the park never received the proper permit and approval to build the new tilt coaster. With the tilt coaster not being able to be built at Six Flags Mexico, it seems that somehow it was decided to build this at Cedar Point instead. The only thing off I find about this is that the stats that Energylandia shared for their tilt coaster are different than what Cedar Point is sharing. Energylandia stated that their tilt coaster would have been about 148 feet tall when Cedar Point is saying that Siren's Curse is 160 feet tall. And Energylandia's tilt coaster was supposed to hit a top speed of about 53 miles per hour and Siren's Curse will reach 58 miles per hour. Now either way, this is definitely awesome for Cedar Point, but if you ask me, and I think a lot of you are thinking this as well, there are so 
many parks in the Six Flags chain that deserve this roller coaster over Cedar Point. Cedar Point is already well built as it is, with a huge lineup of impressive roller coasters, and they still have a brand new roller coaster that they're yet to really open, which is of course Top Thrill 2. So they basically already had a brand new roller coaster to open in 2025. What's also strange is that Siren's Curse is being built right next to Valraven, and Valraven is of course a dive coaster. And while the tilting track into Siren's Curse's drop is definitely different, it's still pretty similar, and overall it doesn't seem like the way that Cedar Point would typically plan out their new additions, because they're usually all pretty different from each other. Now with that said, Siren's Curse will definitely be a very different roller coaster from Valraven. Without question, the ride dynamics on Siren's Curse will be a lot more intense, and better yet, you only have to be 48 inches tall to ride it, so it will be a super accommodating attraction, meaning it will be very popular. And then this is where we get into the other thing that's not Cedar Point like about this ride. It's only going to operate with two trains, and each train only holds 24 riders. In the past, Cedar Point has always gone out of their way to make sure their coasters run with three trains. Millennium Force, for example, was literally designed to run two trains, but Cedar Point requested for Intamin to squeeze in a third train, which is how we got the straight track leading into the final overbank and the separate unload station. And with Siren's Curse only having two trains, I think this is just further evidence that this ride was not meant for Cedar Point. Now, does it fit well into the park? If you ask me, yeah, definitely. Even if the 90 degree drop may be similar to Valraven, this is going to enhance the coaster lineup at Cedar Point without question, and make what is already a destination theme park even more desirable. I was already itching to get back to Cedar Point so I could try out Top Thrill 2, which apparently is amazing, and now with Siren's Curse also opening as well, this is literally insane, like it's crazy, but I still wish this ride were going to a different park. I think even King's Island deserved it over Cedar Point. And besides that, there's so many other parks that deserve the new ride instead, like Six Flags Darien Lake, for example, and so many more. My only hope is that there are plans down the pipeline for these other smaller parks to get new attractions. Now, going back to Siren's Curse only running with two trains, I think its ride capacity will still be pretty decent. Nowhere near as good as a ride like Gatekeeper that runs three 32 passenger trains, but probably somewhat in line with what Steel Vengeance and Top Thrill 2 run at, which is probably about 700 to 800 riders per hour on average. Now, we don't have a full animated POV of Siren's Curse that runs from the station to when the train returns, so I don't know the actual timing of the ride, but considering the advertised duration of two minutes, along with the fact that it looks to have a very quick lift hill, and Vacoma's new coasters have all been programmed really well, meaning in brake run areas, trains are quickly moved through them, which should help greatly with dispatch times. So I'd guess that even with a two minute ride cycle time, you can probably dispatch a train as soon as every 90 seconds. The way I'm thinking is that the ride may have five block zones. I think in this video, I'm going to skip the block zone definition and I'm going to see how you guys react in the comments. So the block zones look to be the station, the lift hill, the tilt track, the service break, and the waiting break. So a total of five blocks. With that setup, it's technically possible for a train to crest over the lift hill before the train ahead has hit the final brake run, which would probably be very hard to achieve, but it might be possible. But even with trains dispatching every 90 seconds, I doubt you would run into that situation, where with that dispatch interval, you might see a train cresting the top of the lift hill as the other one is pulling into the station. The ride also has a rather short cycle time, as according to the off-ride animation, it only takes 31 seconds from when the train is released down the tilt drop to when it hits the final break run, which is another thing I'd say that is not Cedar Point-like, but even with that short duration, I'm sure the ride will still slap, because some of these ride elements and the way they're executed look awesome. But anyway, at a 90 second interval time, that means that 40 trains can be dispatched an hour. 40 trains times 24 seats is 960 riders per hour, which of course is theoretical, but what should help the ride crew load the train super quickly is that the ride should have rather accommodating over-the-shoulder restraints, so hopefully it'll be rare where a uniquely sized guest is not able to fit within the restraint and have to be unloaded off the ride which does slow down operations. And then based off the animation and the way that the former Cedar Fair company was going with their new additions, I don't think this attraction is going to have seatbelts on the trains. So hopefully riders will be able to just step into the trains, pull down their over the shoulder restraints, the ride crew will then quickly check them and then just send the train off without much hiccup of having to go and push down restraints even further. And there shouldn't be many other factors that slow down dispatches like a floor that has 
to move out of the way like on Valraven. The only other holdup should be waiting for the tilt track to return to the home position so that it can accept the next train, but I'm sure that should have no problem resetting within 90 seconds. So I think that even with two trains, this ride has a very good chance of running at the same capacity that some of the newer Cedar Point coasters do. And even with just two trains, some of the other factors make it seem like it could perform even better. So while it's a shame that this ride might not operate at at least 1,000 riders per hour, I think the ride capacity should still be pretty good. The only thing that will really suck is if one of the trains goes out of commission and the ride can only run one train. But hopefully the ride vehicles are really reliable and that doesn't happen very often. And then getting into the ride layout some more, this thing just looks awesome. The placement of the tilting drop looks perfect with it placed right over the midway. Trains will fly down the first drop and head into an airtime hill that looks very similar to the steep twisted drop on Flash at Six Flags Great Adventure. But compared to Flash, it looks like the train will absolutely charge over this hill, probably providing ample ejector airtime, especially to those sitting in the front. The Heartline roll looks great, and then there's basically a triple down, which actually goes into an underground tunnel which has never been done at Cedar Point as far as I know. The element that follows looks like it might be the best element on the ride. It's almost like a non-inverting loop and looks to have an awesome amount of airtime. Then through the rest of the ride, you've got another Heartline roll and several more airtime hills. Overall, it looks completely fantastic. The ride also fills a gap in the park that's been present for a while. Wildcat, which was a classic Schwarzkopf coaster, used to operate in part of the land that Siren's Curse will now occupy. But Wildcat closed in 2011 and another ride was not put in its place. Then behind Wildcat, there used to be the Cedars dorms for park employees. Well, Cedars was taken down in 2019 and since then there's just been a giant unoccupied plot of land. Well, thankfully, Siren's Curse will fill in both of those empty spots pretty nicely. It even looks like that in this location, they're going to reroute the park's perimeter road so that it doesn't interfere with the new coaster. Now, my only hope is that with this coaster coming up so late in the game, I hope the park is able to adequately theme it. Cedar Fair has been pretty good at theming their new coasters as of late, especially compared to the Dick Kinzel days where concrete was the main theme. The ride already has a pretty good name, and I love the tie-in with the lore of Sirens and Lake Erie. The park is already calling the structure of the Tilted Drop a Lake Erie shipping crane tower, so it seems like they're already in the right direction of how to theme this thing. In the concept art, the theming does look rather bland, but hopefully that's just because it's not all thought out yet. I'm also not the biggest fan of the color scheme as this set of colors seems overdone. It's also a bit too similar to Top Thrill 2 for me. I think ideally this ride would have been awesome with purple track, and hopefully we'll see that come later down the road when it's time to repaint the thing. I also love that the trains have lighting and onboard audio, and hopefully that's an awesome touch. And with that, I think that will end my thoughts on this Vacoma Tilt Coaster, which was originally supposed to be located next to Zodra at Energylandia, and now it's in Cedar Point, Ohio. So Cedar Point definitely got a lot better. Other parks that could have used this ride more definitely took an L, but hopefully they get more awesome additions later down the road. And I'm definitely looking forward to trying out Siren's Curse when it opens up in the summer of 2025. Let's all hope that Zamperla is able to get Top Thrill 2 running as well. With both of these new coasters, Cedar Point is about to be unreal. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to drop a comment below with your thoughts on Siren's Curse. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more nerdy content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.